those three people are very critical in the creation of Nigeria. And Lord Harcourt is the only governor general who ruled over two Nigerias. He was governor general from 1900 to 1914. And of course, he presided over two Nigeria. And in 1914, he became governor general of one Nigeria. And of course, after that, we have people who actually rule this country in a way that is possibly unprecedented. Uh, number one, my name is Kan Okwara. And of course, I've got to name a great leader, Chief Awolo and Akitola. And of course, the very, very great leaders, the Southern of Sokoto and the Prime Minister Balewa, over whom I had the privilege in serving of two of his cabinets. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to continue making speeches on this point. Let us be building contractors and accept Nigeria has come to stay as the greatest republic in the Republic of Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. May I now call on General Alani Akiniadi. Alani Akiniadi, I'm a federal delegate. Mr. Chairman, distinguished delegates, I think I join all the previous speakers in thanking the president for giving us an opportunity for redemption. Let me take the opportunity to apologize to the youths in this house. If they cannot understand the expiration and despair being delivered by their elders, it is because they did not live in the 1950s and the 1960s, when we had a federation negotiated particularly by our fathers and which took us to independence and that constitution was suspended in 1964 and finally murdered in 1966. We are products of the happenings since then and that is why the aspiration. But for the elders, I have no apologies to offer on behalf of the military. All the constitutions which truly were dictated from Jordan Barracks or from Marshall Rock were drawn up by you. Also, you watched very painstakingly with assisting the military to march our country into the Gulag. I have therefore thought that this is another opportunity for us to throw away this 1999 rentier constitution that mandates corruption and be courageous enough, be painstaking enough, be cooperative enough, open our minds and draw up a new constitution that can take our country to the promised land which you think we are seeing. I have no hesitation at all in at least speaking for myself that I will sacrifice anything to ensure that this conference reaches a constitution that you, our people can live by, that can stop this rentier syndrome which has overtaken our country and we allow us to march forward as a nation. For now, we are not. But we have the capacity to build one. I thank you, Mr. Chairman.
All right, you're back. The next one. <laughs> Chief. The next speaker is Akintola Chief Adeni. Akintola Chief Adeni. Not here. Then I can your day, Dr. Abiola. She's here. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, um, distinguished delegates, Dr. Abiola Akiyode, representing the civil society. I want to start by uh, my intervention by quoting from this president's speech. As we start a new century of nationhood, we have an obligation to reshape and redirect our country for the benefit of our children. I do not know what led the most revered poet, Professor Wale Shoinka, a Nobel laureate, to say that his own generation is a wasted generation. I honestly do not know why. But I actually feel that he has spoken the fact of his mind at that time. However, as a young Nigerian, I am worried that my own generation will not go in that line. And I see this opportunity for us and for those people who belong to that generation to use this gathering to reshape and redirect history so that we can, our children can benefit from what we are doing. One of the things that the president raised was the issue of decision making. And he emphatically uh, said in page 13 that voices of people must be heard in decision making. And I want to hinge my point more on that. I think one of our biggest problems is that we need to revert power to the people. As it is today, with the governance structure that we have in Nigeria, the power is not with the people. So there is a need for us to use this gathering to revert power to the Nigerian people. People in government must be answerable to the people of Nigeria. Governance must be done in open, transparent, and accountable manners. All government must act as checks and balances. Must be independent uh, in, in Nigeria. The third issue which I want to raise is the issue which the government alluded, which the president alluded to, when he said the constitution that says we, the people of Nigeria, uh, is being debated whether it tells a big lie against itself. I want to say from 1922 Clifford Constitution to the recently amended 1999 uh, Constitution as a 2010, the constitution has systematically excluded the vast majority of Nigerian people, particularly people with disability, particularly women, particularly children. And we have a duty here to rewrite that constitution in such a way that it would not continue to exclude the Nigerian people in several areas, from language of the constitution to the issues uh, around citizenship, to the issues around indigenship. In actual fact, we have a constitution that does not guarantee access to health, access to housing, education, and a whole lot of other things. We have a constitution that by virtue of section 81 does not allow the people to determine the kind of budget that they want for themselves. We will be doing uh, this generation uh, a, 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 a big benefit by ensuring that as we are gathered together uh, in this conference to rewrite a new constitution for Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. Mrs. Brenda Akpan. Mr. Chairman, sir, distinguished delegates, my name is Brenda Akpan. I represent the Nigeria Association of Women Journalists, NAWAJ. I stand before you, Mr. Chairman, to appreciate the speech of Mr. President. It is all embracing, as it is very challenging. But I want to pitch my tent in the area on page five, and also mentioned on page seven, where he talks about an inclusive society where every citizen is a stakeholder. 
And he refers to us as nation builders. He's charging us as those with the responsibility of laying a foundation for a new Nigeria to ensure that those who feel marginalized or excluded are brought back to the fold. How do we achieve this? When we talk about those who are excluded, I can see the women, I can see the youth, I can see the physically challenged. And when we talk about inclusiveness, I can see equity, fairness, justice, and most importantly, participation. Mr. Chairman, we need at this conference, and I'm sure I'm speaking the minds of many Nigerians, to create an enabling environment for the participation, effective participation of this class of people that I have mentioned. The need to participate within the public service, the need to participate in the political arena, the need to participate in governance as a whole. And having read through all the documents that we have been given, I can confidently say that such an enabling environment can only thrive under a governance structure of true federal. Within this conference, Mr. Chairman, in language and demeanor, it is very evident that some of us have not been to conferences of this magnitude. It is evident that many of us were not there in 2005. As such, I want to appeal to delegates to be tolerant with each other. When people stand up to speak, they shouldn't be talked back at, they shouldn't be jeered. It makes them to lose confidence in themselves. I wish that this conference will be more encouraging from now henceforth. Let's domicile our thoughts in Nigeria's interest. Let us forget about our political parties, our religious groupings, and our zonal structures, and see Nigeria as a nation state. It is in so doing that we will be able to build an inclusive society. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I now call on Professor Dora Akunyele. And you can address us sitting down. The chairman has directed. Thank you very much, but I can stand. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, my name is Professor Dora Akunyele, a delegate from Anambra State. Permit me to start by congratulating His Excellency President Goodluck Jonathan for having the courage to convene this national conference. Nigerians have for long clamored for opportunity such as this to discuss our problems and come up with solutions that will strengthen the bonds of our nationhood. I regard this national conference as President Jonathan's best centenary gift to Nigerians and a proof that he is a listening president. Mr. President's speech oozes humility, modesty, patriotism, and a deep concern for the present and future of this beautiful country, Nigeria. Mr. President, in that speech, admitted that sovereignty belongs to the people. And those in authority are only holding power on trust for the people. And of course, that nobody has monopoly of knowledge. Hence, 
the decision for convening this conference. One thing that stands out from Mr. President's speech is that there is no trace of negativism. For instance, he made it clear that Nigeria's unity is not negotiable and that our duty at this conference is to discuss ways to build a stronger and better Nigeria and I totally agree with him. I am convinced that Nigeria should remain as one nation after 100 years despite our challenges because our common values overwhelm our differences. Apart from our long history of togetherness, we've also enjoyed many decades of intermarriages and mutual coexistence. We have to make sure that this conference delivers on the true spirit of Mr. President's speech. While we discuss the value of unity, as written in his speech, we must realize that millions of Nigerians are being discriminated against in various parts of this country. Where they are born, where their forefathers lived, based on the so-called state of origin. The founding fathers of Nigeria had a dream of building a united, prosperous, and developed nation state where social justice reigns. We also have to continue to dream because once we stop dreaming, then life is gone. In conclusion, I am convinced that Nigeria will work and fulfill its destiny. I therefore look forward to collaborating with other delegates to chart the way for a better Nigeria. We all want to see a positively transformed Nigeria. I therefore urge all of us to work individually and collectively so as to set the right agenda for Nigeria of our dream. Mr. Chairman, distinguished delegates, I leave you with the words of this Greek proverb. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Dora. Next speaker is Chief Babatunde Allah. Chief Babatunde Allah. Oh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to begin by saying that this address we have here is to say the least a masterpiece. And that is the least that I can say about this address. Now here, as uh, Mr. President has mentioned, so many issues here, so many things. But I am impassioned by two of them. They catch my focus more than any other. And I want to talk about those two. The first one, is that we come from various backgrounds and we represent diverse groups and interests. To that extent, there may be pressures here and there now and again from those interests that we represent. But Mr. President has urged all the same that we should put Nigeria above this interest. And that is what I think everybody here has been doing. The mindset of everyone, as far as I have seen since this conference started, is the mindset of Nigeria before all others. Nigeria, and that is it. Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria. Now, the second thing that I want to also point out 
is the fact that he said that in the 60s, we were ranked among certain countries. India, Malaysia, uh, South Korea, and someone added Singapore. I'm sure that a lot of you are widely traveled and you have seen what has happened, what, what is happening in those countries. The next question we would then ask ourselves is, where did we miss it? How did you get it wrong? And I think that that is what some of the people, we people here in this conference should be, should be thinking about. It's a major problem that we have to solve. And I believe that with honesty of, of purpose, we shall be able to solve them. Now, anybody can say that there are so many problems in this country. You can talk of Nigeria and say there are 30, 40, more than that number of problems. I'm happy that our elder statesman has said that we are the leading country in Africa. I believe him and I believe that statement. We are indeed one of the best countries in this world. And whether we like it or not, we are a regional power in this West Africa. That is very true indeed. Somebody is even saying we are, we are a power in Africa. That is also correct. So we, our mindset should be a positive one. We should work here with, a, with a honesty of purpose. Honesty of purpose. And I believe that if we do that, we should be able to find solutions to the problems that bedevil this country. Mr. President has mentioned some of the problems. And I think we can group them under three headings, really. One, corruption. Two, unemployment. And three, insecurity. If you take all these three problems and you look at the work plan that the Secretariat has drawn up for the committees, as amended by this, uh, by this uh, uh, conference, I believe that by the time we go back into committee sittings, we should be able to make a clean breakthrough. We should be able to find answers to the problems that I think this country is facing. Then we should have an action plan, a workable action plan, an action plan that we can use, that the youths of today can benefit from because the old ones are going to pass away, no doubt about that. Where are the old ones of yesterday? So the old ones of today are passing away and the youths are coming. We must be able to evolve a workable action plan that will make Nigeria truly great. Once again, I want to say that the uh, address of Mr. President is a, is a very good one and I commend it to this house. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Is Chief DSP Alamisia Aram? Chief DSP. Alaji Basheru Albaso, AIG retired. Mr. Chairman, sir, my name is Basheru Albaso, Katkankano, District Head of Albaso, and a retired Assistant Inspector General of Police. Both from the delegation I come for, Association of Retired Police Officers, and from my present duty I am doing, a traditional ruler, my concern is the security of Nigeria. Mr. Chairman, sir, the security of this country has never been so bad as it is now. In the Northeast, emergency rule has been going on for over a year. And despite the emergency rule, every day people are being massacred. In the Northwest, people are dying every day from clash of what said between Fulani and the farmers, or whatever the reason. In the North Central, even this morning I read in the papers, yesterday over 100 people were killed around the Benway area. 
If you go to the northwest, we have cultism, we have kidnapping going on. Southwest, sorry, southwest. Just last week, a house was discovered where people were being slaughtered and even some people waiting for the slaughtering were rescued. If you go to the northeast, I'm sure our Igbo brothers, southeast, our Igbo brothers will tell you that 80% of them now don't go home for Christmas, despite the importance of Christmas to them. Because they will be kidnapped. If you go to the South South, you find that Mr. President last week said he's going to commit one billion naira to fight the theft of oil. We could see, Mr. Chairman, that we have not been, it has never been so bad. And unfortunately, the primary agent of fighting and maintaining peace and order the Nigeria police has been bastardized. As of now, I think we only have treasures of what you call, used to call Nigeria police. The salary of the police officer is a paltry what one can spend in a day. There is no equipment for the police to work. There is no building for this to work. Our training institutions have run so bad that the president himself, when he went to police college in Ikeja, he became ashamed of what he saw. So, Mr. Chairman, I hope this August gathering will look at the security situation in this country, will look at the position and dilapidated position of the Nigeria police, and take efforts to see that we put the police in a proper position so that people can sleep with two eyes. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Professor Olawale Albert. Mr. Chairman, distinguished delegates, I'm Professor Olawale Albert, federal delegate. I'm a professor of peace studies from the University of Ibadan. I want to start with a historical experience in 1964 when Nigeria was 50 years old. There was a dialogue between Dr. Nandi Azikwe and the Sadawna Osukoto. Nigeria was in crisis 